Welcome back to another video. Um, in this video I'd like to fix a few issues to do with our 2D drag box. So this green box here that's created when we click and hold the left mouse button. Um, so there's a few issues we found. The first one was an issue posted on YouTube. So um, I'm going to read this here. It's by Sandro. So there's an impo important bug to fix here. If we select the units using the drag box and move forward, the drag box is updating, which is great. Uh, but the point on the drag box jumps to the top right. This problem is caused because when we use well to screen points, this method uses unprojection. It's a bit problematic. So that's the key word here. The, that is problematic when one point is behind the camera. So let's replicate what he's talking about. Um, I begin to drag the box and move it up. But as soon as that point gets behind the camera, where we started dragging, the box mesh really starts to create anomalous results. OK, so boom. That's what he's talking about with the top right corner. And this happens in any direction. So dragging upwards begins to move in uncontrollable positions, then goes to the top right. and begins to mess up. So this isn't good. Um, I'm going to fix this in the video. That's one issue we found. And whilst testing we found some more issues with the 2D drag box because this always happens in game design. Um, the more testing you do the more things you find. So if I drag this might work better if I create some more units actually. So let's just create some in this space. Okay so I'm dragging this box and this sometimes works when we rotate as well. So this issue is a bit harder to replicate here. The box sometimes uh, moves un uncontrollably as well. So I'm just trying to... Okay, so it's happening here a couple of times. You can see the box uh, moved at the top. Just trying to do it a couple more times. It's really hard to do. We think we know what the problem is. And we've done some extensive testing, so we think we fixed it. Okay, so the third issue is to do with rotating and dragging at the same time. This is the third issue we found, so I'm going to rotate and again the box messes up. Okay, so okay, so the th we have the three issues. The first one is that when we drag, uh, drag a box and move the camera and the point becomes behind the camera, um, the box moves out of control. The second one is that when we select something using the box, sometimes the box moves in a random way. We don't know exactly what the calculation is in this, but we do know why it's happening. Um, and the third one is that when we rotate, the box messes up. I want to fix the second issue first. So this box sometimes moves uncontrollably. <coughs> and the reason this is, is because we use this raycast to generate the current mouse points, which then we use to create the 2D box. But the thing is, this raycast doesn't have a layer mask. So at the moment, this 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 raycast is interacting with everything in the scene. I'm going to create a new layer mask. So let's call this mouse layer mask. And of course, we need to define it at the top of the script. Public layer mask, mouse layer mask. OK, so what I've done is I've created a new layer called mechanics. And uh, I don't want my raycast to interact with this layer. So when we create our drag box mesh, drag box mesh in this method, this is where we create it and we do not assign a layer to the drag box mesh. And we think this is the game object that's creating this um, this continuous movement of the drag box. So we can say drag select mesh layer equals layer mask name to layer mechanics. OK, so if we hop back to the script, um, go to the world object and configure this layer mask. So let's select everything and then deselect mechanics. I don't want this to interact with the ghost uh, layer either. Neither do I want it to interact with the select mesh. So everything else is fine. OK, so I'm going to test the game again now and see if we still have that issue. And again, it's hard to replicate, I know, but we found that this does fix the problem. The box doesn't move uncontrollably. Different rotations. OK, the box seems to be fine. OK, which brings us to the, the most important issue, which is the box going out of control when we move upwards. So 
In this case, we will still want to use world to screen points, so we don't want to scrap that method altogether. So the best way to do this is probably to limit the size of the box to the full screen height. Okay, um, so we're going to limit the size of this box to the screen height, so it will stop around here, and then the points will never go behind the camera. It's okay dragging downwards. We can drag downwards as much as we like. I'll demonstrate this here. So it doesn't matter how far we drag downwards, the box will still be intact. Same thing left to right. So we can drag as much left to right as we want. It's just in the upwards direction because that point goes behind the camera. Boom, like so. Okay, so we need to limit this. Um, and to do this, uh, we're going to do a few tests. And we also found that doing these tests will um, make the drag box mesh more efficient. So in the previous video we updated the drag box mesh every three frames. We don't need to do this anymore so I'm going to delete this out. So we don't need to do this test anymore. I'm going to replace it with something even better. Okay so in order to do these tests I'm going to create a few more variables at the top of the screen. So under the GUI section I'm going to create a private float I'm going to call this pre box width. Okay, and I'm going to make another one private float pre box height. So we're going to work out the box width and height firstly, see if there's any errors with them, just to be on the safe side before we commit them to the, the final box. Okay, but there's a few more tests I'd like to do. Um, private Boolean mouse drag same equals false to begin with. This is going to see if the if the box has moved from the previous frame. Okay, If it's the same as the previous frame, we haven't moved the mouse, the box is still the same size, then we don't want to recalculate the width and heights and everything. This will come in handy. Okay, so a few more things. Private float previous input mouse x and the previous input mouse y. So we're going to store these from the previous frame to determine if we've moved the mouse or not. Cool, so these are all the things we need. Um, and this is going to become apparent later on, but I'm also going to declare a public static boolean can move camera y. Let's put it to true to begin with. So if that box gets higher than the screen height, then we're going to turn this to false because we don't want to move it any more than the screen height. Okay, but we'll do this in a bit. So if I scroll down to where we work out the box width and the height, which is here, GUI variables, if the user's dragging, we can work out the box width height and then the start and the finish. So as you can see, we actually declare the width and height straight away from this method, well to screen point. Um, we're not going to do this anymore, so I'm just going to copy and paste this and I'm going to call this um, pre box width, pre box height, the things we declared at the top of the class. After we've done the tests, we're going to change these values the box width and the box height. Okay, so we're going to do some tests to determine if we can use these or not. Um, and before we do, I'm just going to create a Boolean um, update box width. Let's put this to true. And another boolean up date box height equals true as well. Okay, and another float not moving equals 0 0.005. Okay, so if the box is has changed in the width or the height this amount, we're not going to bother moving it at all. Cool, so the first test we're going to do is current mouse point zero because um, we noticed that we, we test this a lot and on occasions the current mouse points would be vector 3.0 because the physics, the raycast failed um, and that's what that's one of the things that was happening when the drag box was jumping out of control um, there's nothing we can do about this uh, this is very very rare but sometimes it does fail so we can just simply say if current mouse point equals vector 3.0 uh, we can say update box width equals false and within the uh, curly brackets update box height equals false as well 
because this is an error. Um, again, this is very, very hard to replicate, and it was only doing this when um, the Raycast was interacting with every single layer. It might not happen now, but just to be on the safe side, we can do this. Another thing we can test is if this method worked, so if these values are legit or not. Um, so let's just put world to screen point zero. So again, this might happen rarely in Unity because these methods are predefined in Unity. We don't know exactly the code used to create them, so they could fail sometimes. Um, so just to be on the safe side again, if pre box width equals zero, update box width equals false. Same with the height. If pre box height is zero, update box height is false. So already we're making this more strict, so we, we know we're not going to have any errors when changing the drag box. Okay, so the next test I like to do is to do the mouse point. Has it moved? Has the mouse moved from the previous frame? And to do this we need the current mouse point from the previous frame. Um, so I'm going to, right at the top of the script, I'm going to declare public static vector3 previous mouse point and we can store this in the late update so let's find late update so at the top of late update we can then simply say if uh, mouse drag same um, so if the mouse drag is not the same if it's changed from the previous frame we can then simply say previous mouse point is the current mouse point because on the next frame um, we can use this value and then on late update it will change again and we can also say previous uh, input mouse x equals input mouse position x and also previous input mouse y input mouse position y so this is all the information we need from the previous frame okay so going back to the uh, tests now we can check if the mouse has moved from the previous frame so so let's firstly test for the box width if the width is updated we can just simply say if the uh, absolute value of previous mouse point x minus current mouse point x is less than not moving so 0 0.005 and input mouse position x is the previous mouse point x so this is the screen position in 2d space if this is the same and the 3D point is less than 0 0.005 um, then we can just simply say update box width equals false okay so we can copy this and apply the same thing for the height so if the Y value has changed less than 0 0.005 units and the Y position is the same in 2D screen space update box height equals false okay so then we can just test is the box exactly the same as previous frame and to determine this we can just simply copy these two arguments and merge them together so if the width is the same and if the height is exactly the same getting with that if statement then we can say mouse drag same equals true else mouse drag same equals false Okay, so this, these were the tests I like to do. Um, we found that this is quite bulletproof. Nothing really can go wrong in this case. We, we have a solid um, box width and box height. So we can use this data now. We can say if uh, update box width, we can then define the box width. So box width equals pre box width. So nothing went wrong with the box width there. And we can also define the box left here. Okay, because that's that's the input mouse position X and it has changed so we define it there okay no longer need this we can then say if update box height if we can indeed do that uh, box height equals pre box height and uh, box top can also be calculated here as well because the drag box has changed cool so things look a bit nicer now only update if values have changed 
and are legit. No errors. Cool. So this is when we work out the box start and the box finish. And uh, again, this is only needed if the mouse is not, if the drag is different. So if it's not the same, we can go ahead and work out the box start and the box finish. Okay. So only calculate if box has changed. Right, so now we have some good values for the box width and height and the box shape in general. We can go ahead and, and stop moving the box if it's higher than the screen height. And to do that, uh, we can use our variable we defined at the top of the script called can move camera y. Okay, so the first thing we know is that if we lift the mouse button and the user's dragging, we can stop the drag on this frame, which we've already coded, and then we can simply say we can move the camera in the y position because we've stopped dragging we can go back to normal functionality um, and if we scroll down to where we worked out the box so here we can work out the bottom left point of the box um, if I play the game let's demonstrate where this value is no matter where I drag the box it's always going to be the bottom left position of the box okay so where my mouse is if this is less than zero it will be off the screen so if I drag the bottom left point is off the screen about now okay if this is the case we want to stop scrolling in the Y okay okay so very simple calculation we can say float box bottom left equals box start X because the box start is always in the top left of the box minus box height okay this will always be the box the point at the bottom left of the box so we can do a calculation to, to determine whether we can move the camera in the Y position. We can say if box bottom left is less or equal to zero, in this case it will be off the screen, or the absolute value of the box height, because it might be uh, negative, um, is greater than equal to screen height, if the box is greater than the screen height. Then we can say can move camera Y equals false, else can move camera y equals true. Okay, so now we can jump to the world camera scripts and put this value in. Very simple to do. But firstly, uh, I mentioned we can improve the drag box mesh in late update, which is here. Instead of calling it on every frame, we can now call it if the drag box has changed. So if the 2D one's changed, we can then update the 3D one. So we can say if the drag is not the same, simply update the, the drag box mesh as well. So again this this uh, this is a lot better than the method we used in the previous video okay so if we go back to the world camera script uh, we control the translation of the camera in the method called get desired translation so I'm going to find that so if we press the W key or this or the mouse is at the top of the screen uh, we move forward this is great this is the value we need to manipulate the thing is we only want to move forward if mouse can move camera Y um, and just for simplicity's sake I'm going to put mouse.cs because this value relies on the mouse script then then we can change the desired translation and move the camera forward okay so that is uh, the one line of code that fixes the issue so let's jump back and see if we have any errors play the game so I'm going to drag the box, I'm going to move it up firstly boom, we've stopped moving up now because the box is uh, the screen height basically and uh, this limits the amount of errors that we can then have cool so um, this, these are all the tests complete, the box is no longer uh, jumping around we can test this, we can put units in the game if we'd like we can rotate the camera and uh, the box will no longer be jumping around. Very concrete bulletproof uh, system now. Okay but the last issue is that when we rotate the box still still manipulates in a weird way. Very simple thing to fix. If we jump back to the world camera right at the top in the uh, late update we can simply say if mouse user is dragging then we can update the rotation so if the user is not dragging boom update the rotation and uh, this just makes sense because rotating and dragging at the same time is really confusing we need to click the left mouse button the right mouse hold the control key 
so I'm trying to rotate now it's not working awesome so all the issues are fixed now um, and again thank you again to this Sandro guy for posting this and uh, if you find any more issues feel free to send me a comment and I'll post a video to fix it or try to fix it and we might find some more issues as well so thanks for watching this video um, obviously these improvements will be updated in um, RTS project part 2 um, and the code will be available for you guys to get so thanks for watching the video